praise the Lord. What can I say after that? God is good, isn't he? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh. Anybody come expecting? Anybody expecting something good from the Lord? You know, I think that's part of receiving. One of the biggest parts of receiving is when you come expecting to receive. You know, God doesn't have to get you in that place. You're already there. You come believing and expecting something for the Lord. It's always great to be here. I, I haven't spoken here since, oh, it's been probably 10 years in the old building even. But I appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning, and I've already done this once this morning. This is strange to me to come and, and, and have a service right after another service, preach the same, it's almost like Groundhog Day, I don't know. Deja vu or something, but uh, so we're just going to, but the Lord has been so good to us, and we, you know, we are pastoring a great church in, in Ponca City, Oklahoma, been there for about seven years, and we just had a wonderful celebration in July uh, of our seventh anniversary there, and this year, instead of just celebrating one day, we had three days, and we had my brother-in-law and my sister and my brother from West Plains, Missouri, who pastors a church there. We had them come, and for three nights, we just went ahead and had revival. And just a great time. Ended it up on a Sunday with my mom speaking, and we just had a great time. But it was something that was needed, you know, in the time that we were in. Because after going through, you know, everything that we've gone through, uh, uh, even with the, the, the COVID and everything, our church was trying to come back, and the people were coming back, but they weren't in that place, you know, that they needed to be. You know, they weren't focused, and they weren't, you know, thinking on God. But that, that three nights that we had just did something for us. It just, you know, really gave us what we needed and just really got everybody once again focused on God and the things that he has for us and really stirred the vision that our church has. But that's something that, you know, God began to speak to us about in January of this past year. He began to speak this portion of scripture to us that I'd like to share with you this morning. If I can, if you have your Bibles, Galatians chapter 9, or chapter 6, I'm sorry, verse 9. And it says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto those who are of the household of faith. I'm going to pray real quick if we can this morning. Father, we just thank you once again for another day. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, just to speak life this morning. Lord, we love your word, Lord, and every opportunity that we have to speak your word. And Lord, that's what we come to celebrate today, Lord. Lord, just the opportunity to be here. God, give us relevant revelation in your word. Lord, just send us out of here with something, Lord, you know, that in our spirit, Lord, to take home with us, take through the rest of the week. And Lord, we're just going to give it all to you now in Jesus' name. Well, in January, God began to speaking this to our church, and it became kind of a, a, a theme for us throughout this year. How God began to, you know, uh, speak to us about opportunity. And as I began to speak this word, God began to give our church opportunity. I was offered an opportunity to speak at a conference, and then all of a sudden, God began to bless the church and began to fill it up, and we started a building program, and uh, we were just getting ready to get into that uh, building, a new sanctuary, when March came and the COVID hit us, and of course, shut us down for 30 days, and I started seeking the Lord. I said, okay, God, you spoke to us about opportunity. What are you going to, how are you going to give us opportunity when we're not even able to have church? But the Lord began to bless our online ministry. And that began to grow. And then that grew into uh, drive-up services. You know, where everybody came in their cars, they stayed in their cars. And we had people coming and pulling up in their cars that didn't even come to our church. But God was using that and giving us an opportunity to be a blessing and to, and for the, to see the church blessed. And we went on, and God has begun to do some other great things for us. And uh, even December 3rd, we have another opportunity to have the uh, singer Carmen. I don't know if any of you know him, but he's coming to our little church in Ponca City December 3rd. And when they called me about that, I, I began to tell them, I said, well, 
right now we're, we're wanting to build a new sanctuary. We might be able to cram 135, 140, maybe something like that in there. I said, we have a few times, and I said, they said, well, we don't care. We want to come anyway. And so I had been speaking about opportunity, and even though I was kind of apprehensive about it, I said, you know what, let's do it anyway. So be praying for us. Carmen is coming December 3rd, and we don't have a lot of room, so, but we're going to have a great time, I believe, in the Lord. But this is something that the Lord is showing us, that God has, you know, will give us opportunity in the most inopportune times. You know, I, I, I go back to thinking about Joshua chapter 3 and the children of Israel. And when they came down to the promised land. And after 40 years, they finally are coming into that place that God had promised them. They send spies over there. And they come back with the word. They come back with, with the fruit, milk and honey. But there was only one thing between them, and that was River Jordan. And this was the time of year that River Jordan was at its highest point. Isn't that way God is sometimes brings you down to what seems like the most inopportune time? Yet God is wanting to move in your life. Oh, I, I was thinking about this opportunity at the most inopportune time. Yet this was harvest time. Harvest time, that means that the fruit would be at its best. Well, this is the most unusual and unpredictable and unprecedented time that we're living in right now. I've never seen anything like it. But I believe that this is the kind of time when the church can be at its best. A time when people are confused and afraid and anxious and stressed. But the fruit of the Spirit, I'm talking about love and joy and peace and long-suffering, should be flowing out of the church. An opportunity at the most inopportune time. You know that word inopportune means something occurring at an inconvenient time. You know, God kind of likes to get us sometimes out of our comfort zone. Is that all right with anybody? You know, we get into a place where we get used to doing things a certain way and the same old thing. And God will come in and like to change things up a little bit. And I've read about this word inopportune. It says a storm blew up at an inopportune time. That's why it was describing it. And uh, it reminded me of... Uh, uh, incident in Matthew chapter 8. It's talking about Jesus. He speaks to his disciples and he said, let's go to the other side. They have an opportunity right here to be with Jesus. You know, these disciples they eventually became known for being with Jesus. Acts chapter 4 tells about Peter and John. They go to Gate Beautiful and they heal a man who has been lame from his mother's womb. And the Bible says that they take them before, you know, the, the council and the, and the scribes and the Pharisees. And they begin to accuse them. And they looked at those men and they realized that they were ignorant and unlearned men, yet they had been with Jesus. Oh, this is a great period for them here, uh, right before they get into this ship with the Lord. This is a great period. Jesus had ordained the 12 that they should be with him. That's what the word says in Mark chapter 3. He would send them forth to preach and to have power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. So they're going through a wonderful, smooth period here. You know, kind of like we go through a lot of times, you know, with God. It seems, have you ever gone through periods where it seems like everything's just going great? Going through periods where it seems like all your prayers are being answered? Oh, it's wonderful, the church is growing. And maybe like right before it was with COVID. That's the way it was with our church. Our church was just booming and busting out at the seams. And all of a sudden, that came along. Well, that's the way that it happens, you know, a lot of times. You're going through uh, such a great period of time. But a lot of times that can be dangerous. Because that a lot of times that can cause, you know, God's people to lose sight of him. You know, here they go. They get in the boat with Jesus and they have been given power. They've been seeing, seeing miracles and healings and doing, seeing great things with the Lord as they travel. Now they get into the boat with him, and he's in the bottom of the ship. And the Bible says here, behold, there rose a great tempest in the sea. Insomuch of the sea was that the ship was covered with the waves, but Jesus was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him and saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are you fearful, O ye little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds in the sea, and there was a great calm. You know, I had something... Uh, 
unusual last week. But I, I was over at the church, and I was uh, all of a sudden I heard some uh, somebody in there working, and I went in, and it was one of the men in the church, and he was taking out the hot water tank and and putting in a new one. I didn't even know it had gone out, and I was back there talking with him for a while, and it was it was a major job, and I helped him a little bit, and. And finally, uh, the next day, I was over at my house, which is next door to the church. And I was in the house, and all of a sudden, my daughter-in-law was there, and she started yelling for me. And I came in there, and I looked in our back room there, and the hot water tank in the house blew up. And it looked like a steam room in there. There was smoke, and there was water everywhere. My little grandson, uh, little grandson was standing there, and he said, hot He's two years old. That's a big word for him. I, 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 and so I called one of the men from the church, the same guy that had been there the day before. And he came down, and we were started working on the, the hot water tank in the, in the parsonage. And, and, and I said, I, I said, do you get the feeling the Lord's trying to tell us that we're in hot water? Anybody know what I mean? I got to tell you this, church. Remember this. With opportunity comes opposition. When you have an opportunity to do something for the Lord or, or to be with him or to get closer to him or, or to be in church, remember, church, the enemy's going to come against you. You know, a lot of times coming to church on Sunday morning is one of the hardest things that you do all week long. You wake up in the morning and it's a, a, a lot of times it's the last thing you feel like doing. Opportunity will always, you're always going to have opposition. Well, the Bible talks about this tempest here. And then that word tempest in the Greek is the word seismos. It's where we get the word seismograph, the machine that measures the level of earthquakes. Well, underwater earthquakes are what create tsunamis. Well, usually the storms on the Sea of Galilee are created by winds rushing across the rugged mountains that surround the water there. But Matthew here is using the word seismos. Asserting that this storm is different. This is a different kind of, anybody ever go through something and then you, you it, it, it seems difficult and then you go through something that's really difficult. All of a sudden what you had gone through before didn't seem so bad. You have tough times and then you have really tough times. Well, this was a tsunami. And it was created by a shaking. See, around the Sea of Galilee there are numerous underground hot springs. And on this occasion, it was up, it was creating an underwater shaking, producing this tempest. You know, what's funny is that when my, uh, uh, the man in, in, in my church and I got the hot water tank done in the house, it took us about five hours. Well, I'm not mechanically inclined, so that makes it worse even for somebody that knows what they're doing. But the, it, as soon as we got done, my brother called me from West Plains. And he said, you know, I just had the strangest thing happen. He said, my hot water tank went out. I said, Lord, the whole country's in hot water. Of course, that was a day after the election, so you kind of know what I was, I was thinking. But as soon as they said that, God began to speak something to me, showing me how the hot water will produce a shaking. Is somebody listening? I believe that 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 the difficult period that we might be in right now will create a shaking in the church. I believe, church, that if we allow it, it will create a spiritual tsunami. It will cause us to begin to seek Him. Oh, anybody listening to? It? See, this is what happened here with the disciples. This tempest that they got into it caused them to seek Jesus. To do something, you know, that they should have been doing all along. But no, everything has been going great until now. And I'm going through the, one of the worst things I've ever gone through. I'm going to begin to go. They will go and wake him up. And he comes and he rebukes the storm and calms the sea. See, when we begin to seek him like we've never sought him before, it will give us opportunity to see God move like we've never seen God move before. Oh, my goodness. See, these men were dumbfounded. They were baffled. They marveled. What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey? I mean, they were amazed at the power that Jesus had. All he had to do was speak a word. Well, I believe, church, that this is when opportunity 
When we get into a situation where, you know, we need to really receive from God. Anybody ever been there? You go through something and you realize right now, I need him. Well, Luke chapter 11 tells us, uh, 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 uses a word that's used only one time in the Bible. And the word is importunity. A lot of times, opportunity needs importunity. Well, it tells about, in Luke 11, about three friends. And the first friend is on his way and on a journey, and he stops at his, the second friend's house. But the second friend doesn't have anything to give him. And he feels bad about this. I, 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 but he has another friend. So the second friend says, you stay here. I'm going to go to another friend. He goes to the house of the third friend and begins to knock on the door. The third friend begins to cry out. He said, I'm already in bed. My family's in bed. Don't bother us. But the Bible says because of importunity, he continues to knock. Importunity means shameless insistence. Oh, I might be ashamed that I have nothing to offer my friend on his journey. But I know somebody who does. Oh my, he's got exactly what me and my friend both need. So he comes to church and he begins to beat on the door until that third friend comes to the door and gives him what he needs. I'm going to stand here, shameless and sis, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to beat on the doors until you give me what I need. Oh, anybody listening? See, this is what I believe that God is trying to show us. Jesus went on to say, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? God wants us to see his willingness to give us what we have need of. He's begging us to seek him, to fulfill his purpose in our life. If you seek me, you'll find me. If you knock, I'll open it. Ask, and I'll give it to you. I believe this is a time that he's trying to get the church into that place, into that position, that we recognize the, the situation that we're in. You might be facing some things in your own personal life right now. You may be going through one of the most difficult times of your life. I believe that God is trying to stir the church and let us realize, church, that even in the most inopportune time, God has given us opportunity. We can come to him and we can see him begin to change things. Anybody got faith this morning? I was reading something over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to share this with you. I kind of threw this in at the last minute. But it's uh, an incident in the life of the Apostle Paul, and it's a great uh, moment in his life. And he said, Brethren, I, when I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Did you hear this? He said, I, I stood in much trembling. That much trembling, is the translation is a Greek phrase, in tromos pulo. The word in describes the state that Paul was in when he began to minister to the Corinthians. That word tromos means to shake or to quake. That word pulo, in tromos pulo, that word pulo means large magnitude. Kind of reminds me of that tempest. It's telling us here, church, as Paul came to the Corinthians and began and stood up and began to preach to them, that he literally shook. As he stood up to preach. I mean, this is the great man of God. He had stood before great crowds all over the Roman Empire. He was a member of the Sanhedrin court, and, and he had knowledge in, in, but in Acts chapter 17, it tells us that he had just come from Athens, where his success was limited. Athens was full of men of great knowledge and wisdom. So Paul felt he had to go there and Give them a, a, a word. He knew that it was a place of, you know, where uh, Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and men of great understanding. So he went there and he gave them an incredible word in Acts 17. But it was limited. 
in what he saw done. And he came out of there and he was, became aware of his own shortcomings. Physically weak, poor appearance. Not only did he feel inadequate physically and maybe even homiletically, but he was also aware as he began to stand to the, and preach to the Corinthians that there was enemies in the crowd. They were just waiting for him to say the wrong thing. Anybody ever come across people like that? Just waiting for you to say the wrong thing. Oh, I believe that God is trying to do something in the church today, giving us an opportunity in an inopportune time to be a witness and to be a light to a world out there that doesn't know what's going on. Here he goes, and he stands up in church, and he was aware that, that you know, that about the enemy. And there was a great trembling within him. Today there's a great trembling in the church because we're fearful a, 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 a lot of times over the unknown. We don't know what the next few months are going to take place. We, it seems like the things that are going on around us only compound what we're going through, even in our own personal life. This is all that we needed, along with the COVID. And, and we may even look at the election and say, you know, this doesn't make sense. I don't understand what God is doing. Well, Paul was in a place where he's, he's got to stand and he's got to speak a word. He'd already gone through a place that he felt like, you know, he, he had gone and he had failed. He didn't see what he wanted to see done. You know, we stand here today and we're not, you know, we haven't seen everything that God has for us. Oh, how many believe God's got a plan and a purpose for every life in this place? Oh, hallelujah. How many believe God's not done with me yet? Oh, come on, somebody agree with me. You may be going through something right now, but let me just come to tell you this morning, church, that God has something for you. He's got a plan and he's got a purpose. And no matter what it looks like right now, God said that he that started a good work is faithful to complete it in you. Oh. Paul stands up. He makes a decision. He said, I determined. That's a decision. I believe it's decision time if we're going to stay the course or not. Well, Pastor Kale, it's not what I thought 2020 was going to be. The way things are looking. How many, you know, when we started out this year, we had great plans. By now, I should have my new sanctuary almost built. I haven't even started on it yet. We had great ideas, and God was speaking opportunity to us. We thought this was going to be the year that God was going to perfect his vision for our church. And then all of a sudden, things begin to go in a completely different way. Well, I, I look at this church, and, 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 and I know that, you know, we get to the place, well, Pastor, my life's not going the way that I always thought it was going to go. I, I, you know, maybe you've gotten to the point that you didn't expect the, the physical struggle that you're going through. Maybe you've got a condition in your body physically, and you're, you're going through a struggle you didn't expect to go through. Maybe you just got diagnosed with something you didn't see coming your way. Maybe you're going through something emotionally or financially or even a spiritual attack. Well, Paul's gone through that. He's gone through something I think he was unprepared for. And now he's going to stand and make a decision. Am I going to continue doing what God's called me to do or what? Am I going to continue to have faith or am I not? Am I going to continue to do what I know that the Lord wants me to do? He determines in his mind. What does he say? I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. As I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words a man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. His inadequacies produced an utter dependence on the Holy Spirit. And the power of God. Oh, how many's ever come to that point? I reach a point I can't do anymore in myself than I've done. I've done everything I can do. I, 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 so this is what he was His own, he had reached a point that he had done everything that he could do. And he realized that he couldn't do anymore in himself. But it brought about an utter dependence and a reliance upon the Holy Spirit. You see, that's what he's saying, that your faith should stand in the power of God. We have to demonstrate no matter what church that God is God. 
we have to demonstrate right now in an inopportune time that the church is still the church. Even in fear, in much trembling, let's determine this morning to take advantage of every opportunity that God has given us. It may seem like the most inopportune time, but that's when God's people are at their best. Oh, my. Even when they came down to River Jordan, and it seemed like the worst possible, the water is higher right now than it's ever going to be. It's in that season when it's, it's, why did God do this? Why did God allow this? Why now? And, 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 and in the upper, but do we understand, church, that's when the fruit was at its best. I believe the church of the harvest, you have an opportunity at the most inopportune time for your fruit to be at its best. I believe now is the time to seek God like you've never sought him before. I believe now, church, is a time that God is ready to do things that you've never seen him do before. Maybe you're comfortable in the things that you've already seen. Maybe you're comfortable in the things that you know. Maybe you've gotten to the point that you are praying that God would do things that you have already seen God do. But anybody in a place right now that you want to see God do things that you've never seen him do before? Oh, am I talking to anybody? My church this morning, uh, they're having church right now, and it seems strange to me not to be there with them. But we are believing God uh, is still going to do something this year. We've only got a couple months left. But God is giving us opportunity every time I turn around. And even in the most difficult times, I believe God wants us to be aware because we have an opportunity. Paul saw that when he was totally relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, that Paul was at his best. Oh, anybody know what I'm talking about? When I get to the point that I can't do it anymore, I've done everything. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you've got situations. Maybe, you, maybe you've got, Pastor, I've done everything I can with my family, and they're still a mess. I've done everything with my kids. I've done everything on my job. I've done everything to get ahead, and I can't get ahead. It seems that, but do you understand that you come down to that place that Paul was talking about? That place where, where you're totally dependent on him. Come on, somebody. I come here this morning, church, and I wanted to leave this with you. And as I come here this morning, I, I, I can only do one thing. I realize even when I get up here and I begin to stand before you, I'm totally dependent upon the Spirit of God. I realize, though, church, even now, that opportunity this morning that God has given us. I believe that this church, God is ready to do something right here at Church of the Harvest. Anybody else feel this way? To everyone that's watching online, just let me encourage you that I believe that God is ready to do something with this church. I don't believe that God is done. I don't believe that COVID has finished you off. I believe that God is wanting to do things right here that you've never seen him do before. He's just looking for a people that will begin to seek him in a way you haven't been seeking. But a lot of times we got to come to a point that we recognize our need. We look around at the country today, and I see a need. We see it where, where I live. I see it when I come to, into Olathe. We see this country has a need. There are people today that don't know the answer. They don't know what to do. They don't know about Jesus. But I believe that this church is going to be a light. This is an opportunity right now in the most inopportune time. Because there are people out there that don't know which way to turn. They don't know what to do. And it's the best time for the church to be the church and say, let me tell you about Jesus. I go to a church where we still believe in praying. I go to a church where we still believe in healing. I go to a church where we still believe in miracles. I go to a church that we're seeing God doing great things. 
Oh, church, we stand on the brink of some great things. And God is just trying to bring us into that place this morning. Bow your heads with me real quick. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. For those of you that are here this, today, and maybe you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. This is the greatest opportunity of your life. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and say, Pastor, uh, I'm going through something right now. Well, I've got the answer for you. It's Jesus. And maybe you're with me this morning. Can I get everybody to stand with me? I want you to stand and begin to believe with me. Maybe you're here this morning and you've got a spiritual need, a physical need. Maybe you're going through a storm emotionally or maybe it's a financial thing. Well, Pastor, I've got family problems right now that we're going through. And I don't see the answer. But you know, church, this is what we're talking about today. You have the opportunity to come to him and give everything to him. Right there where you're standing, somebody start believing with me. Father, in this place right now, I'm going to pray for those, Lord, right now. Lord, if there's any that's unsaved in this place, never received Christ as your Savior. Lord, right now, we'll just begin to touch their spirit and begin to move. God, let them realize that they can come to you right now. Jesus came and he died that, that we might have life and life abundantly. We can come to him and say, Lord, I believe that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you came and you died for me. And through you, I can have eternal life. Even if you're standing here this morning and you perhaps uh, 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 maybe a spiritual or a physical need. You're going through something, a, a storm in your own family, in your own home. You're going through something right now emotionally. Pastor, I, I come in here this morning and I don't know what to do. Here's an opportunity, church, to turn everything over to Him. That physical thing maybe that you're dealing with, that maybe that sickness in your body or the attack against you, somebody turn it over to Him right now. I believe, Lord, that your word declares by your stripes I am healed. Somebody speak it. Somebody claim it right now. Maybe you're going through something emotionally. Uh, uh, he hasn't given me the spirit of fear. Power, love, in a sound. Somebody speak it with me. Maybe you're going through a financial thing. Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm on the verge of losing everything. My Bible tells me he said he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody claim it with me right now. Somebody begin to speak. It's, Lord, I've come to the end. I realize right now, I'm going to turn everything over. To, I put my family in your hands. I put my children in your hands. You said, train up a child in the ways of the Lord, and he won't depart from them when he's old. Lord, right now, I put it all in your hands. Lord, I'm coming to that place that the Apostle Paul was in. When he said, I come and I rely totally upon you that they might see and that their faith might stand in the power of God. Church of the Harvest, you got an opportunity right now as you surrender everything to God. For God to begin to work in your life to the degree that those around you begin to see it. It begins to do something in their life. They begin to see the power of God working through you as God begins to change situation after situation. As God begins to straighten out your home, your family, your children, your finances. As God begins to bring healing to your body, to your mind. That they might stand in the power of God. Church of the Harvest, I'm praying for you this morning. I believe today that God has got something great for this church. And is ready to do even greater things. And give Him praise for it. Give Him a hand of praise before we leave.